All right. So, with what we where we left off with yesterday, what is one of the arthropod success? Well, I'd like to think we spent enough time on them. Oh, all right. Because that's not, that's just arachnids. I mean. Okay, so what is the importance of that exoskeleton that we discussed in class? That's probably something that you're not going to see on there. Okay, that's what all skeletons do, but what's another function? He just said that. Anything else? Okay. So, what is, we said the exoskeleton, that's a function. Okay. Yes, it does provide protection, but what's a secondary function that we talked about in class? No, it wouldn't, it's not going to provide camp. It, it might, but that's not a function of it. It's something that you're not going to see. It's one of the things that we had talked about. Uh, we, yeah, we already said protection. Well, you're not far off with wings, per se, because the exoskeleton provides spots for muscles to attach to. Okay? And then what was the example with the desert arthropods? See, your front row or back row? Front row. Okay, front row. It's something that you're not going to see on your paper. It's what we talked about in class. So desert arthropods, who might those be? Okay. So what is it that that exoskeleton is so vital for besides protection, besides providing muscle attachments, but also what? Because when you're living in a dry environment, this precious commodity is something that you don't want to lose. No. You don't want to lose water. That's right. Okay. So what's another function of the arthropod success? Not a function, but what's another one? You're too far ahead. We haven't talked about that yet. Mm, no, that's, that's only unique to just those animals. This is all arthropods. Well, that would be tied to their muscles, Diversity though. Of How about they've got jointed appendages? That's right. Okay, because the example that we gave, okay. I wonder how long it'll take. How long will it take? It's taking longer than I thought. Jeez, get your notes out. Not only that. Carson. Yeah, not only that, Carson. My computer's not on. Mm. Not you, idiot. Yeah. Oh, my computer, Carson. Get this. Carson. Carson, shut your computer. With you, Carson. Oh, he's staring at you. Shut your computer. That's, I was wondering how long it'll take. See, it's those little things that when we talk about that and when we're looking at computer screens, that's when we lose that opportunity. Okay? So, and I know we're not all senior zoologists here, but would we agree that we just don't bring that idea up once about arthropods living in dry environments then... We ask you that sometime later down the road. No, we talk about it. We review that every day. And when we're doing things like that, that's when we leave, or one way of saying just leaving points on the table. It's just uh, hopefully um, easy points not to um, leave behind. In other words, it's kind of like 
uh, trying to drive and you want to score touchdowns, but you keep scoring field goals. That's uh, just not always going to be beneficial. Okay. Yes, King. It works for the Vikings. What? Yes, what? The field goals that works for the Vikings. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. Barely. That's what he said. But before that. Oh, no, that's all I've said. Yes, what? <laughs> Yes, Kings? What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah you said that. <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, yes, <laughs> you did. <laughs> because we could probably say go back to the videotape because the because oh, this is on. Okay, so what are we talking about? Who's know, Yes, King? Okay, so remember this is where this versatile exoskeleton, okay, these jointed appendages, and we could have said, well, I'll take that even further and say, well, we had talked about air being piped directly to their cells, okay, so what are the structures that do that? We just verbally said what they were. One starts with an S. And it is one of your vocab terms. It's the external openings. External openings. That what? That leads to tracheal tubes. What's a trachea for humans? That's a tube or structure that goes from the back of the pharynx down to the lungs. So it must be something for respiration. Okay? So here we see this right here. Efficient tracheal system, okay? So air is piped directly to these cells where the spiracles are the external openings that then lead to these tracheal tube systems, okay? And we got down to here, if I remember right. I said this is where we would begin. Okay. All right. It's not the first time that we've seen something like this. Tactile organs and gastropods, what might that have been? What's this? eyesight okay so then not only is it just having eyesight as a tactile organ okay because the reason we say that is types of sensory organs here we have compound eyes okay so as we look at this then, as we said with the gastropods, those were the first types of animals that had these tactile organs. Eyesight, had an oral <coughs> cavity, could probably taste, could certainly could hear. So then now the arthropods are even more advanced because they're so much more diverse. There's a lot more arthropods on this earth than what there are any other species and we showed you an example of that and why is it that there's so many more arthropods okay why is there so many more arthropods on this planet than any other phylum because be, be, oh, now you got to go down to the class level that we said okay there's well there's an abundance of many other types of animals but that doesn't make them having such a large class. It's the, remember, when we're talking about phylums, then there's assorted classes. So if the phylum is arthropoda, there must be a class underneath them that is really, really huge. Uh, arachnids. Insects. Insects, okay. So the arachnids, okay. Okay. 
Okay. I, I guess maybe this is just, hopefully this isn't pointless. So then when we're talking about some of these behavior patterns, okay, how, how do offspring know how to survive, okay? So this learning plays an important role in survival. And we're talking about behavior patterns. If this is how we're taught by the parents, well then that type of behavior pattern then would allow animals to be certainly more successful. And that's obviously the case with having so many arthropods, diverse arthropods on, on this planet. And then when we talk about reduced competition, okay, I'll let you get caught up to this here. And what we mean by that is, in a related question, we would say, are you consuming the same amount of nutrients as what you did years ago? And of course, the answer is no. Okay? So then, what that must mean then, is when we look at these different types of stages, what does that mean to you, a larval stage? Baby. Okay, so still developing, still growing. Okay, and then obviously with that of an adult is more fully grown. So since these take in more nutrients, okay, there's going to be less competition between those. Okay, so if there's less competition, well, then there's going to be more food available for adults because larvae are not consuming as much nutrients as what uh, juveniles and adults would. So this reduced competition is certainly an advantage then as well. And I think the reason that that's important is because this is the first time that we see this. We could say that this is true for any type of animal. Yes, that's true. But this is the first time it's ever been, you could say, observed that would affect so many different types of animals afterwards. Then I think that is, I was going to say that was, that was it. So, so there's, we're not done yet, but there's six keys. We said, okay, the exoskeleton. Then what type of appendages? The jointed appendages. Then the other one is respiration. What about it? Spiracles and airs. Uh, those are the openings, leads to the tracheal tubes. So then this is piped directly to their cells. Then something about what about their sensory organs? They're more advanced, okay, than any other animals that we had encountered. There's the fourth one. Okay, then something about their behavior patterns. Complex. They're complex. There's the fifth one. Then finally, the sixth one, we said, has to deal with their diets. Okay, because not all types of arthropods are consuming the same type of diet from their larval stage, juvenile stage, to their adult stage. So with that, we move on to our first class.
Mayor Stramata. So one of the things that would, would hopefully resonate just because of this term right here, okay, would you guess that this is terrestrial on land? No. No, because uh, this would be very closely related to then of the crustaceans, whether they're uh, lobsters or crabs or crayfish, which are also types of crustaceans. But with this, okay, the reason that these animals are in a different class is because of this structure right here. And their body is not segmented like many other types of crustaceans. Your, uh, I, I don't think you really watch, unless you have the Discovery Channel, did you ever watch the show uh, Deadliest Catch? Is that ever something that caught your attention at all? I don't even know if it's on anymore. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But one of the things that you could see with those types of animals would have three distinct body segments. Okay? These animals just have one. Okay? You might say, well, it's got this telson sticking out, but that's still part of that initial body segment. So when we look at this, what does a horseshoe look like? Exactly. It looks like this right here. Okay? So because of that, that is just its one body segment, okay? So then I think, is it maybe one more or does that take us to the arachnids? That does take us to the arachnids, okay? So one of the things that we will do is we go a little further than just the order level, okay? Because... One of the things that we know, okay, we had the phylum, the arthropods. Here's your class, okay. Arachnids, okay, that is also a class. Then you have, and you're going to be able to figure this out, there's three types of arachnids, okay. Spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites. Ticks and mites belong in the same class. Those are acarians. Then you have your Scorpionida is an order, which of course would be scorpions. Then your Arachnae would be your order for your spiders. Then we go down one more level to the family type. Okay, So the classification of that is just a little more, um, let's say, we'd say advanced or precise as opposed to biology. When you learned, you had your... You had your uh, class of mammals, then you just had your orders. We didn't go down to the family level. This class, uh, we do. Okay, so we'll start talking about the arachnids tomorrow, so we'll catch up to you next time.